It's Tuesday, September 24th, 2024, and once again, we're doing an update on potential Tropical Cyclone 9, soon to be Tropical Storm and eventual Hurricane Helene. Currently, this is a Tropical Cyclone with wind speeds only at around 35 miles per hour and gusts up to 46 miles per hour, but very quickly, we expect this to get a lot stronger. Let's take a closer look at the slice of the atmosphere that this uh, Tropical Cyclone is taking up right now, and you can see that this morning, we we are getting quite a bit of convection over here near that central area of low pressure just to the west of Georgetown south of Cuba this is where we expect to see lots of these explosions today that will eventually become the core of our hurricane right now uh, things are a little bit disorganized it doesn't necessarily look like a hurricane but that's going to change very quickly now like I said winds are only officially being reported as around 30 to 40 miles per hour but we've got hurricane Hurricane hunters out there and interestingly on the northern side of this convection here they actually found some 59 mile per hour winds in some of those thunderstorms so it's very possible that by the next update after this plane makes a couple of different passes through the storm we might see this upgraded to a tropical storm and the official forecast track here does suggest that we're gonna have tropical storm Helene by at least 2 p.m. today so probably around the time you're watching this video as we get into 2 a.m. tomorrow morning things are gonna be developed Developing. Okay, we expect that this is still going to be a tropical storm with winds around 58 miles per hour. But very quickly, we're going to have a Category 1 hurricane on our hands as this gets past the Yucatan Peninsula and into the open and very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. By the time this is on its approach to Florida, we expect that this is going to be a major Category 3 hurricane with wind speeds of around 115 miles per hour and wind gusts up to 138 miles per hour. This is 2 p.m. on Thursday. That's likely going to continue to increase the intensity of this storm is going to continue to increase all the way up until it makes landfall somewhere between Panama City and Tampa likely in the Big Bend area of Florida and then this thing's going to rocket inland and still be a tropical storm capable of producing 80 to 90 mile per hour wind gusts all the way up here in south central Georgia at 2 a.m. on Friday and then from there it's going to continue to go on up into the Ohio Valley where we do expect to see some continued gusts of wind but mostly just a bunch of rain up through the Appalachian Mountains. So hurricane warnings are in effect for portions of Cuba, tropical storm watches, and hurricane watches are in effect for the majority of the coast of Florida. And honestly, I think everybody in Florida is going to be impacted by this storm in some way. Also, I think that we're going to see impacts well inland. And this is mostly because of the size of the storm. Okay, so first of all, right off the bat, looking at the uh, HAFS model here, you can just see how large the disorganized area of thunderstorms is that's going to eventually create this hurricane. As early as later this evening, we're going to start to see some thunderstorms in southern Florida associated with the hurricane that's going to make landfall days later. Look at how big this thing gets, man. As this actually forms into a hurricane likely early in the morning on Wednesday, we're going to see the front edge of some of these clouds all the way up here into North Carolina. So a storm that essentially affects Central America all the way up to North Carolina. That's that's a huge storm. Also, watch very closely this trough right here. There's a disturbance with some cool air behind it that's going to try to steer this storm. And a couple of things are going to happen as a result of that. First of all, it is actually going to make the storm make a little bit more of an easterly turn, but it also could aid a small, tiny little bit in the intensification of this storm as it rapidly approaches the coast of Florida. The good news about this slingshot effect that the trough is going to have on our hurricane is that it is going to have a little bit less time over those open waters but man it doesn't need a lot of time look at this by 5 a.m. Thursday we're going to have a monster hurricane out there in the Gulf of Mexico rapidly intensifying if it was to stall out or you know go any slower it's very hard to tell what would be the outcome here but it would not be good this thing is going to slingshot right up into the Big Bend area of Florida and then make landfall likely sometime between between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Thursday. It's still hard to tell exactly when that landfall is going to happen, but even if we don't see landfall in Tampa, for example, you can see that just because of how large this storm is going to be, Tampa and Clearwater and everybody on the western side of Florida is going to really feel the impacts from the storm. Beyond that, we also are going to see significant impacts inland as well. Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, everybody up there in the Appalachian Mountains, especially on the southern side in uh, North Carolina, 
Carolina, Virginia, and southern portions of West Virginia. I would definitely be watching out for this one in terms of flash flooding. And then we're going to see a continued thunderstorm, a strong wind, and tornado threat all the way up the east coast as this thing tries to fizzle out. So here's the full progression. Once again, we're going to be in full-on major hurricane mode on Thursday. Early in the morning on Thursday, we're going to watch this thing come all the way up into the Gulf Coast, somewhere in western Florida, make landfall, and then go on up the east coast. Now, it's not going to go all the way up into the northeast. It's going to kind of dissipate and fan out before that, but definitely Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, you guys have got to get ready. All right, so let's hone in on some of these forecast models that we've been looking at. Uh, once again, this is the HAFSB model, which has done a really good job in the past. It is a little strong, I think. This model I'm getting ready to show you is, let's call it the worst case scenario, because not all of the models are showing this robust of a situation, but look at this. Wednesday at 5 p.m., we've got a hurricane here with 105 mile per hour gusts just to the west of Cuba, uh, just to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is before the rapid intensification even really starts. As we go into Thursday, very quickly, we've got 170 mile per hour gusts around here. As you can tell, the farther into the future we go, the more it's over that open, very warm Gulf of Mexico uh, water, it continues to strengthen. And in fact, the HAFSB model here at 11 a.m. on Thursday, September 26th, says that it's very possible that around that inner eye wall, we see 200 mile per hour wind gusts from this storm. High end, but still not out of the question. That's a very realistic thing that could happen. And just look at how large the wind field is. Here we are on Thursday, September 26th at 2 p.m. And the hurricane is way out here, way off the coast of Florida. However, already at this point, it looks like places like Fort Lauderdale up to uh, Tampa could be experiencing hurricane force winds. One of the big problems I think that we're going to have with this storm, regardless of how strong it is, let's say it's only 150 mile per hour gusts rather than 200. That would be like a best case scenario, right? I think the storm surge is going to be a big problem here because whenever you get a big giant wind field like this, it's going to move a lot of water. So as early as noon Thursday, we could start dealing with hurricane force winds or at least wind gusts in places like Tampa. And then that's going to continue all throughout the day. And then of course, landfall is going to happen somewhere over here closer to Horseshoe Beach or Cedar Key. Even whenever landfall happens, it's possible that we see those hurricane force wind gusts as far east as over here near Savannah, Georgia. As this gets farther inland, here we are at 11 p.m. on Thursday, we're talking about still maybe 130 mile per hour wind gusts near the southern border of Georgia. So just a gigantic wind field here and a recipe for widespread damage if this happens this way. Now, once again, this is on the high end, not necessarily going to be this strong, but this is what we need to prepare for, right? Just in case. And then as we go even farther into the future, it's possible that we see 60, 70, 80 mile per hour wind gusts uh, intermittently. It's not going to be constant even into the day on Friday in portions of Georgia and South Carolina. As the storm gets closer to North Carolina, it is going to weaken a little bit, but we're still talking about 40 to 50, maybe even some 60 mile per hour wind gusts associated with some of these storms as we go deeper into the day on Friday and we go farther north and east. Here's what the radar could look like during the progression of this storm. This thing's going to look like a full on classic monster hurricane by 5 5 a.m. Thursday. We've got to watch these outer bands really closely as these come on to shore early in the morning on Friday in western and southwestern portions of Florida. Those are going to probably have some tropical tornadoes embedded in there. So we're going to have a lot of tornado warnings likely during the day on Thursday. And then probably around 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Somewhere in that time frame, our focus is going to shift from the outer bands to that inner core, 100, 115 mile per hour winds, and the mass massive storm surge that's going to be possible with this moving up into western Florida. But look at this, 8 p.m., we're talking about really strong storms potentially capable of producing tornadoes up there in Georgia as well before the main part of the storm even gets to you. Although our uh, wind gusts are going to be decreasing as this goes farther north, like we're not talking about a hurricane anymore once this gets into South Carolina, just look at how intense the convection is going to be. Flash flooding is going to be a big problem here, and also tropical tornadoes are going to be very possible anywhere on the eastern side or in the front right quadrant of this circulation. And this model run right here looks to me convincing. This looks like a tropical tornado producing system. But once again, one of the main immediate threats that we're going to have here, one of the biggest problems that I think we're going to have to deal with is the storm surge. We're talking about 10 to 15 feet of storm surge here in the Big Bend area, especially around Cedar Key 
and Horseshoe Beach. Wherever the storm ends up going, let's say it takes a path like this, the storm surge is likely going to be a little bit worse on the southern side, so keep that in mind. I still think it's possible that this goes a little bit farther east than what a lot of the current paths are projecting right now. So I think even over here just north of Tampa, you guys have to be worried about the higher end of some of these storm surge readings as well. But hey, even just 6 to 10 feet or 5 to 8 feet is going to cause a lot of problems. So make sure you are prepared for that in whatever way you need to be because this is definitely going to happen, okay? There's no if, ands, or buts about it anymore. The hurricane is coming. And once again, we're going to start to feel the impacts from this today down here in southern Florida. Some big time downpours are going to happen. But also, we're going to have a little bit of a severe weather situation in the Ohio Valley today. Watch those cells pop up around 3 or 4 p.m. Those are going to be capable of dropping some hail, producing some isolated tornadoes, and mostly some straight line damaging winds. And then that'll be out of our hair uh, before midnight tonight. And then as we go into the day tomorrow, of course, our focus becomes all of the rain and all of the problems that are going to start showing themselves as a result of our hurricane coming up. There is a slight risk of severe weather today. Once again, that 2% tornado probability there in portions of Kentucky and West Virginia. I would be surprised if we saw a tornado today, but uh, certainly some damaging winds. That's definitely possible. And then as we go further into the future, this is going to dump a lot of rain in Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, North Carolina. Uh, it's not going to really make it into where it needs to go. We're having a big time drought up here. A lot of us are having a big time drought up here. Unfortunately, all of the rain and all of the moisture is going to get wrung out on this side of the Appalachian Mountains. However, this is going to set the stage for a new kind of stationary system to set up with intermittent chances of rain over the next week or so. So as we go into October, I think we're going to experience some cool weather and some rain. It's not going to be drought ending rain, uh, but certainly welcomed rain for a lot of us over here that need it on the eastern side of the United States, so keep that in mind. But where we don't need it, flash flooding is a big problem. Moderate risk of excessive rainfall in Atlanta, all the way up there into southern southwestern portions of North Carolina. Of course, the majority of the panhandle of Florida is included in this. So get ready. If you're in the yellow or the red zones here, you are in a place that's going to receive too much rain very quickly. So if you live in a flood-prone area, make sure you are prepared for that. And of course, we are 100% going to be live Thursday covering the landfall of this storm. We might even be live Friday as well. I don't know about Wednesday yet. We're going to spend probably a total of 20 plus hours covering this storm live. I don't know how we're going to split that up yet. It kind of looks to me like the best play is just to be live all day Thursday, just to make sure that we're there for everything. The tornadoes, the landfall, the flooding, all that. However, things can change. There's a possibility that we go live for a little while tomorrow, and then we go live for a little while longer on Thursday, and then a little while on Friday. It just depends on exactly when landfall is going to happen and how impactful those outer bands are going to be tomorrow with the tornado threat especially. So just make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on so you don't miss whenever that next notification comes. It's more than likely going to be a live stream and not a video. So I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Ooh.